Hello friends, today I'm going to show you how you can perform a CRUD operation using stored procedure from an API in .NET Core. Okay, by CRUD I mean the insert, update, delete and uh, select from a stored procedure. Let me show you the stored procedure. So here is the stored procedure. I'm receiving a, a, a text like insert, update, select and delete and I'm performing the operation according to that. I have the parameters for all the column values and these things I'm going to send it from the API and run that. Uh, let's just do a brief of the steps what we are going to do. Okay, so CRUD operation with stored procedures using API. The first we need to create an API project from Visual Studio. Add a model class, add all the required NuGets, fix the connection string in the app settings.json, add the DB context class, and fix the program.cs. The next, create a stored procedure with all the operations and the parameters that we will be de that will determine the type of action to perform using an efails condition. And finally, create the API controller that adds all the action methods for the operation and pass the required parameters. Let's see that in action. All right, so if you are looking at this for the first time and you don't know how to create an API, let me just go through with the steps. So you create a new project and you select the project type as a web API. And oh, I'm slow here. Okay, you need to select the ASP.NET Core web API, like this one, this one, move next. Then you select the project name, you select the location where you wanna save that move next then uh, you select the framework like .NET 6 or 7 I'm using 6 uh, HTTPS you may use you may not and then create once you create that you would see a blank project you would see a blank project like this so nothing would be there in the controllers and this data and model folders won't be there so first thing you do is you create the model class so we add a new folder to the to the project like right click on the project add add new folder and then in this folder name it as models in the model right click on the model folder add new class name it as the name of your table so my table's name is patient once you have this patient uh, class add these field values or whatever columns you want to add the key the first id column should be a key integer that's a counter and the remaining columns that you need okay so I'll put the codes in the GitHub uh, repository and share that with you so you can understand that. Okay, this thing not mapped is uh, the string which we are trying to send to the stored procedure, but we really do not have a column like this. So when you want to have something and you do not want to put that in the database, you put it, mark it as a not mapped. Okay, so that will not go into the database. All remaining things goes to the database as columns. Okay, now this is our model class. So if we go by the steps uh, from the presentation. Okay, so after the model class, we need to put the NuGets. So now that our model class is ready, uh, let's add all the NuGets. So we go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and from the Manage NuGet Packages for the solution, we add the NuGets from there. Um, let me show you what all things we have installed here. So I installed the first one that comes up, the Newton Soft comes up first, slash buckle is by default, Microsoft Entity Framework Core tools. that's, uh, we have installed that, the SQL Server and the Entity Framework Core and the Diagnostics. So if you would have looked at it on a text version, so this, uh, these are the NuGets that I have installed here. Next we go to the connection string and fix the connection string. So connection string should be set up on an app settings.json file. So this is my connection string, uh, you can put up yours. Now next we go to the DB context class. Add another folder named data and put the class file in it. Name it as application db context. This is a class file. So inside the data folder, add new class file and name it as application db context. Okay. Once you have this uh, class file and then you inherit that from the db context, um, this is the base class that we would be inheriting from. Application db context is inherited from db context. In the, this is the constructor. In the constructor uh, parameters, use this one db context, application db context, options, base options. And below that, add your class file public virtual db set. This is going to create your table. Once you have this thing, you have your nuggets, you have the app settings with the connection string, go for the package manager console and add migration. We have created that. Let me just show you what things you need to put in the command. Add migrations, migration, I'm sorry. And then 
I need any text name. This I put it. I need you can put it anything here. So any name for this migration file. Once you run this successful, you will get a, a migrations folder, which I do not have here. I'm already using a table, so I do not have here. Uh, if you are using an existing table, you don't need to add migration. You simply put in the connection string. What is the uh, the database and what is the server? It will take care of the table and everything. If you already have the table, so you just have this patient's table, so that will be taken care of. In case you do not have that, you need to put this add migration that will uh, create the uh, file which has the commands, and then you update the database. The next command is update database. That will create the table in your database. Once you have the database table, you should have something like uh, a table and a EF migration. And now that you do not have any value, you could be able to see all the columns that has been created by migrations. Then you come up to our controller section. Let's move ahead to the controllers. Oh, I'm sorry. We missed out the stored procedure. So we create the stored procedure. Right click on the um, programmability folder. And in the stored procedure, uh, you need to add a stored procedure. You don't need to right click on that. Oh, you can just put in this in the command. Uh, I have created alter. You need to put in create. So you need to create procedure name. A proc and the procedure name, and then uh, you have uh, these parameters. These are the input parameters, and then the if else condition, and then the insert, update, select, and delete queries in it. I need to run the stored procedure, and the stored procedure is oh, it's already there, so I need to create an alter. It's not allowing me because I already have it, so now it's created. So let's go to the controller, add new controller. I have patience controller, so once you create the controller class, add new controller, name the controller class with a controller at the end, select API controller, okay? Add this and then put in the name of the controller with an ending uh, with a controller uh, as the, uh, what do you say? Suffix, okay, we should have a suffix controller name. Then uh, inherit that from the controller class. Initially it would be controller base, but I'm using controller because I'm using return JSON. If you want to return anything else, you can use the controller base class, but I'm using JSON, that's why I used controller class. Now. Uh, use dependency injection to have the DB DB context. Okay, I didn't tell, I didn't tell you about the program.cs. Let's have a look at that. The program.cs is configured such a way that we have the application DB context and the connection string configured in it. Uh, these are the two lines that I only added with the default program.cs, so nothing much more in here. Uh, moving ahead to the controller class, we have uh, the first one HTTP post with an X I action result create, and I'm passing the model class as a parameter so that I will have all the values in it. And as you can see, these are the command that we need to pass on. I will I'll put that in the GitHub. Okay. Now index will receive my content from the database and show that uh, on the screen. This is the index. You can see that the 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 command for the index is context dot table name dot from SQL raw and put that uh, the name of the stored procedure with the parameter at the rate type equals to select. So this is the parameter that's going to understand what type of operation is this is it a select or if it's um huh okay so i can hard code this one and here i'm sending it from there but i can hard code here with insert you can pass that from the api result or you can pass it from here so in case of insert you're passing all the values to the parameters but you don't need that in the remaining instances if it's an index you don't need anything if it's an edit then you need to put in like what is the condition of the edit in your stored procedure according to that you will send the values so my update has it's going to update the age and the address uh, following it with the type of id or the the id it has received so i just pass three parameters to it id age and address and the t type is update so four parameters delete is only taking the id and the type of the operation and it's returning me the message like it's deleted or it's updated or whatever it is okay let's run this application and see that it works so currently while it's running uh, if i'm looking at my table i have how many six rows and uh, let's try to add one row and try editing and deleting that one okay so here um, get patients should show me all the records that i have so i have like how many five six okay so that's going to show me six records here swagger comes by default if you want to put that in postman you can just copy this uh, url from here and send this as a type of get request and this will work on uh, postman so these are the results that we see here now let's go ahead and create one and s work on that way so post is going to create try it um, i will pass nothing with the id because that's an auto generated column let's put the first name as alex last name as David, page, um, I will put that, say, 62, address, I would say, may work. Patient type, let's say, inpatient. Head number, let's say, 25G. Diagnosis, uh, uh, I don't know anything. So let's say, medicines. 
T type, let's say, uh, we're not adding anything here that will be taken care of at the back end. Otherwise, if you want to pass that, so you will just mark it as insert from here. Now let's execute this, and this is going to add a new row to my table. What I got? Which one? Huh? And varchar to integer. Give me a second here, guys. All right, guys. Uh, so what happened was like uh, it was expecting a parameter with the ID, so I did not pass anything for the ID. Um, it was pass it was expecting every parameter in the um, stored procedure. So as I used an ID, so it was expecting an input parameter at the ID. Though it's auto generated, but you still have to provide something. Okay. So remember one thing: when you are creating the stored procedure, try to initialize all of them integers with zero and varchars with blank. Okay. You need to put that thing in the parameters. Otherwise, it won't work. You need to take care of this procedure so that it works with our API as expected. All right, now, um, if we are running this create, let's see. Uh, I haven't shown you. Okay, so one row is already created, and I deleted that one, but still, I'll show you. So now we have the patient, and I'm um, trying to create uh, a record. So I'll provide this one with, uh, um, I think I already have a Kevin. So let's say Kali and uh, Jones, age, let's say 65. Address, let's say Idaho. Type is, let's say, outpatient. Pet number, let's say, 36T. Diagnosis, I don't know, just medicines. Type, I don't need to pass anything, but it's already there. Insert. It's already hard coded there. See, it's added, okay? Let's see that in the database. Yep, we got the record in here, okay? So we got that. Now let's try to update that and delete that. Let's do other remaining things. So get will give me all the records, edit, uh, try it out. So I'm trying to change. Where's the ID? That's 20, okay. So in the 20, I will update the age and the address, I guess. So currently the age is 65. Let's make it 25. And the address is Idaho, so I will make it London. So he moved to London. And let's execute that. Update it, okay. Let's check that in the database. Perfect, we got this 25 London, okay? So that's updated. Now let's try to delete this, clear. Let's go to the delete and I need, I think that's the 20th, try it out, 20th row that I wanna delete. Yes, that's the 20th row. Perform the operation, execute. Okay, response is deleted. Let's check that in the database. That's deleted. Okay, so as expected, our stored procedure worked with the type of uh, message that we are sending it and the, the queries that we are working on. So if you want to have a look at this stored procedure, you can look at it in the video. Or else I'm also going to share that in the GitHub. So pretty much that's all about this video. Um, I hope you understood what we went through and what worked for us. Um, so until we have our next set of videos, stay tuned, stay connected, and happy coding. Thank you.